Attention musicians of all levels. It's not always easy picking out a song by ear. Sometimes you need a little help. Well, I have the app for you. Whether you're a professional musician or a beginner, Ultimate Guitar is an amazing app. For just $2.99, you get the chords and tabs on guitar, bass, or ukulele for over a million songs. They're all available at your fingertips. You also get tools like a tuner, metronome, chord library, lessons, videos, and more. You can find out any song you want. It also has like transpose button. It has auto scroll that you can change the speed to so you can play along with the song. A lot of the songs have the lyrics there so you can sing along with them. Ultimate Guitar is an amazing app. Just go to ultimateguitar.com or download the app to your phone today and start playing. Start playing any song you want. Ultimate Guitar, that's the place for you. Let's get down. Attention Austin musicians and music industry professionals. Are you having a difficult time navigating these tricky waters? Well, the Austin Music Foundation is here to help you. The Austin Music Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to strengthening and connecting the local music community with innovative programs that empower musicians, music industry professionals, and music businesses within Austin's creative economy. With expert panels, consultations, mentoring, and mixers, AMF's programs provide the necessary tools and opportunities to help the Austin music industry succeed. Now look, ever since COVID took over last year, everything's moved online. The consultations are online. They're at no cost to the artist or to the music industry professional. Just go to austinmusicfoundation.org. That's austinmusicfoundation.org to find out how they can help you. Austin Music Foundation is here to help. Johnny, I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys all had a good weekend, whatever it is you did this weekend. I had a good weekend. But gang, real quickly, before I tell you about my weekend, I want to tell you guys that today, Tuesday, September 13th, is a very big day here in Austin, Texas, as it is Ham Day, the Health Alliance for Austin Musicians that provides health care for uh, the musicians here in Austin, which we all needed at some point. Uh, you can find them at myham.org. That's H A A M myham.org uh, there's music all over town today powered by PNC Bank I met those dudes the other night at a thing and, uh, and they seem like very good people and I'm really glad that they're out there sponsoring today uh, gang when I say there's music everywhere all over town today uh, go to myham.org look up the thing and, and see where there, there is so much music today from 7 in the morning until 2 in the morning there is music restaurants are donating a portion of their uh, of their of their earnings today to ham to help out the the music community and you guys know that i work with the austin music foundation the artist development program tonight uh ham and the austin music foundation have joined forces and uh tonight at the mohawk september 16th there's a specially curated ham day celebration showcase curated by the austin music foundation this showcase is a must on your ham day calendar uh, music in the in the indoor stage at Mohawk uh, from a, at 8 p.m. from Jane Leo and uh, at 9 p.m. Anastasia Hera and the Heroes, 10 p.m. The Amazing Kid Jones and 11 p.m. El Combo Oscuro. All of these bands have been in our artist development program. El Combo Oscuro is in our sixth year currently in the program. But Kid Jones, Anastasia Hera and Jane Ellen Bryant have all been through the program. Jane Leo, fantastic band. I haven't gotten to see them yet. So this is an exciting, exciting night for me i will be hosting that's what i was going to say yes uh since i work with the austin music foundation's artist development program and i talk so much i will be hosting this show tonight tuesday september 13th at the mohawk indoor stage 8 p.m jane leo uh, 9 p.m anastasia hera and the heroes 10 p.m kid jones and 11 p.m el combo oscuro Come on out, man. Get out there and support Ham Day. There's music all over town. I mean like at McDonald's, at more than normal at the airport. Uh, uh, banks where you go. I think all the PMC banks have have music going on all day and all their, uh, all their things. So get out there and check it out. MyHam.org. Okay? Um, as I said, gang, I did have a good weekend. Uh, I, I had a, a kind of intense weekend. Uh, my dog Rosie became sick. And I just found, I got off the phone with the, uh, with the vet today. She's doing a lot better. 
but uh, she got sick to her stomach. And on Wednesday, she had some diarrhea. On Thursday, she was scheduled to go in for some, uh, the rest of her vaccines or her, her vaccine boosters from a year ago. And, um, and when she woke up that day, there was blood in her poop. And that freaked me out. So we made a sick appointment, went in that day, uh, did some stuff. The next day, she was like totally lethargic and it was worse. So we went in again on Friday. I'm, dude, like 550 bucks later. Um, I mean, look, you, you pay what you do for these dogs, but you know, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of money. Anyway, so we, we did it. Uh, Thursday, I had to go to this thing for artist development program for Austin Music Foundation's artist development program where PNC Bank was giving us a great check. Fantastic thing. At a gig that night at Opal Divines for co-op radio. That was great. Had a great time. Um, but I was really worried about Rosie. I left her with my cousin Emily on Thursday. And then Friday, we didn't do anything. We just chilled out all day. I took care of Rosie. We went to the vet again. She got a bunch of medicine, started taking it. Saturday, she felt a little better. I went to Brenham with my cousin Emily to help her with some stuff out there that she needed done. Brought Rosie. She brought her dog. They chilled out. Rosie was still kind of a little mellow that day. Uh, but then yesterday, she woke up and she was much better. No more blood in the poop. And... Uh, I got a, a message from the from the vet today saying that uh, her fecal lab exam that they got back this morning said that she had some kind of parasite. So we're going to see about treatment because she is doing better. So I'm going to hear back from the vet again and see what they think about starting a treatment or not. But man, those things with your dogs, man, they freak you out, right? They freak you out. I had a great time playing that Opal Divine show. Uh, they're doing that every Thursday. That's Thursday Night Live uh, sponsored by Co-op Radio. I know Matt Giles is playing. I know it's going into into uh, into October. My friend Scrappy Judd Newcomb's playing. My friend Scott Collins is playing. All great stuff, all right? And gang, don't forget to get out there and get involved with Ham Day today. It is very important. If you live in this community, get involved with it. If you don't, man, check it out. It's pretty cool. It, try and start one in your community. People can do that, you know. The Health Alliance for Awesome Musicians. musicians. Find it at myham.org, Okay. Um, gang, I have a great show for you today. Uh, a, a Nashville based artist, singer, songwriter, Andrew Combs is my guest. He has a brand new show that came out a couple weeks ago called Sundays. Great, great, great album. Okay. He got together with these dudes, his collaborators on Sundays after he had had a pretty rough nervous breakdown at around Christmas of 2020. His friends, Dominic Billet and uh, Jordan Lenning, who was just on the show a few months ago, started inviting them to, a, to their studio every Sunday, and they'd record a song. Well, they ended up making a record. The record was actually recorded in mono, and a uh, fantastic, gorgeous record. And it has this Sunday vibe. Like, you know how some records, you know how, like, Tapestry by, uh, there's so many records for me that have, like, a Sunday vibe. Like, you wake up. You, you make the coffee, <laughs> you start like cleaning up, you put on that record, you lay around, you read the paper or, or look at your phone or whatever the hell it is that you do on those. It's like a thing like that. And it really was made on Sundays. The record's called Sundays. It was recorded in mono. Fantastic fucking record. You'll hear a rec uh, song that I, I really loved on it. I really connected with it. It's called Down Among the Dead. You'll hear that. It has a crazy synth Eno-esque keyboard solo. And gang, listen, uh, Andrew, fascinating dude. Fascinating dude. You can find him at andrewcombsmusic.com. But he is on tour right now in the UK and Europe until September 17th. Find him at andrewcombsmusic.com. If you live in Nashville, he will be playing at the basement on October 2nd. Once again, andrewcombsmusic.com is where you can go and find out all you need to know about Andrew Combs after you listen to me and him talk about his whole life. Really, really great conversation. I really, really like this dude. I feel like we really connected. I wish we could have done it in person, but it was over Zoom. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with this amazingly talented artist and very cool dude, Andrew Combs. Let's get down. rehearsing for a tour oh so you're going to go are you're going to you're going to uk into europe yeah like tomorrow um, right tomorrow we leave 
Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. So you're you're uh yeah you're currently in Philly. You're gonna do it with a band. That was my question. I was wondering how you were gonna perform this amazing fucking record Sundays. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, yeah we, it's a strip. It's a stripped down band. It's just a three piece. But um, yeah, there, there there will be a rhythm section, which will be nice. Yeah. Man, this uh, this record, I I love I love. There's a, a specific sort of album that has spanned time from like uh, Rubber Soul to uh, uh, Tapestry by uh, by Carol King to Sea mm-hmm. Change by Beck. Your record, this record, Sundays fits in that Sunday morning like the record yeah. you throw on. You know what I mean? And it sets the it sets the tone yeah. of like the the mellow vibe of the day. <clears throat> yeah I well I, thank you I love all those records so I consider that an honor to be included with them yeah man um tell me a little bit you recorded these 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 songs like uh, you would go and record a song like for, like from start to finish every Sunday is that what yeah it ended up being um I would uh write during the week and then we'd go in and just record two or three songs, usually whatever I had written during the week and uh, keep whatever ones felt right. I mean, we w- it was just three people, really. Myself, Jordan Lenning, and Dominic Billet. Right. And then, so we would record all the basics together. Me and them as a rhythm section would go down live. Most of the vocals are live, too. Okay. And then um, later we would add, you know, some keys here and there or um, if we wanted woodwinds. Right. Man, that's really yeah. amazing. Uh, Jordan Lenning was actually on the show like sometime in the oh, last really? year. I awesome. can't remember exactly when, but sometime in the last year he was on the show. Yeah, he's an a interesting prolific guy. motherfucker. He really yeah. is, man. <laughs> he is. So, well, yeah. walk us walk us through, like, like just, just like... How did you guys do this? Like you would walk us through what one of those Sundays was like. Well, I'll walk you through, through the first Sunday, which is how it all started. Cause okay. Jordan, Jordan and, and Dom are two of my best buds. So Jordan had the idea to just get together um, on a Sunday. It was during the height of, you know, COVID stuff. And, um, just have coffee and see where it went. He had this idea to record me um, totally dry with, you know, no verb or delay. Um, and we, I, I didn't have many songs, but I went over there with a couple I did have. And um, we just kind of fart around, honestly. Like we would just, every Sunday we would just kind of hang out and, um, I'd play them a few songs and they'd be like, Oh, that, you know, we'd kind of arrange them together and yeah, yeah. put put them down. It was pretty simple and it felt organic. And, um, I think it's, it's neat. Cause Jordan, this is, uh, you know, to quote Jordan, not verbatim, but he said, this is like the closest, he, he walks into every record with the idea of what it's going to sound like, and inevitably it turns it turns out sounding differently. And this, he said this is the first time he felt like he walked into a record and it came out exactly like he thought it was going to come out. Wow. So I mean, I mean, it was it just felt so natural. I mean, I I've recorded a few records before. I'm not saying like I'm. A, a well-seasoned pro, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I've you've been, been through the frustration. Yeah. Yeah. You've been yeah, consistently been making records part. for like a decade now. Sorry. I hate zoom. Cause we talk over no, each other, no, no. but yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I, I understand. Um, yeah. It, and, uh, it just happened, uh, organically and it, I'm so proud of it. It's like the best thing I feel like I've ever done. And, um, I know that some people probably won't get it coming from where I was before, but that's okay. I mean, I'm always trying to change things I, anyways to keep it interesting. I went through your, your stuff and, and you, 
I, I mean, I could see that, but it seems like you're an uh, an artist in motion. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, not not like to be mm-hmm. weird and like compare you to like a David Bowie, but like that's the kind of audience you should garner that's there for the Andrew Combs experience, whatever it is he's given you that day, you know? I mean, fuck, dude, yes. the Beatles yes. were like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all my favorite people yeah. evolved and changed, you know? Yeah. So from from Dylan to Radiohead, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, that record, Ideal Man, I listened to that whole thing. That's fucking great, too, man. Thank you. Yeah, that was another cool experience and new and different than anything I've ever, I had ever done as well. Yeah. Um, that yeah, was... I worked with Sam Cohen. Who is that? Yeah, I worked with Sam Cohen up in New York. Uh, he's a producer and a writer and guitar player. And that was just me and Dom and a uh, guy, Jerry, whose house I'm at right now, who's coming with us to Europe. Um, it was just us three. We just did everything. It looks like or, you do I mean, pretty well. It looks like you do pretty well over there and your fucking calendar. Like you're playing a a lot of shows in like less than a month. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, I'm not, I'm not big over there by any means, but I definitely do better than I do here. Yeah. How many times have you been over there? Well, minus 2020 and 2021, I try and go over once or twice a year. And I guess I've been doing that for, you know, since 2012 or 13. Yeah. So, um, so what happened? Like, let's talk about what happened in between Ideal Man and Sundays. Like, obviously, 2020 happened. We were in lockdown. Where You you were in Nashville? Yeah, my family and I live in Nashville. Like your family, like you were, you have a wife and kids? Or? I have a, yeah, I have a wife and two kids. Okay. Uh, one, one is brand new, though, like, came this year, so. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much you read into the... Yeah, press release or whatever. I did, but my audience didn't. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I mean, I kind of struggled with the idea of even including this sort of personal story, but it was so connected to what I was writing about that I just felt like I had to. But I I mean, I I had, for lack of a better word, the nervous breakdown. What did did that look like? It looked like, like I couldn't get out of bed for about two weeks and um, I sought medical attention um, and also started meditate, like started doing TM at the same time. How, how did that, like, how did, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. How did that, how did that, how did TM come in and like, like you, you sought medical attention and then like a couple days later, like how did it just fall in your lap? Or something like what? What happened? Well, I've been toying with the idea for a long time about exploring TM. Yeah. Um, my uh, we have some good friends. Uh, one of one of our close friends grew up in the town in Iowa. I can't remember the name of it, the TM capital of the U.S. Like that Maharishi started and everything. So she's been meditating since she was five, and she's like one of the most mindful, kind open-hearted people, beautiful person. Um, her mom uh, is big in that world. And so I just talked to her. I literally, the same week that I sought medical attention, I started meditation classes. So who knows which one is really working or if they're both working, but it doesn't matter. I'm doing them both. <laughs> Cause uh, I feel a lot better. But um, yeah, so I, I went through that. And um, then sort of on the heels of that is when Jordan called me to do this sort of experiment on doing a dry record and we ended up doing in mono as well. I I did. I want to talk about that. But was he doing that as your friend? Like, hey, you got to get out of your house at least one day a week and like maybe, you know, do something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, he didn't know what I was going through until, I mean, he asked me, "Can do you want to come over Sunday and do this thing? 
And I said, yeah, just letting you know, like the past two weeks have been the worst of my life. And I only have two songs that are in my back pocket right now, but so to no expectations, like I have no clue what I'm going to be like, but yeah, let's get together. I'd love to see you. It was that, that it was that of. fast after you did like, yeah, like like probably, it's the probably week all of, three like, things really when you think about it, Jordan. Right, the medical stuff, the TM, and and I didn't call you Jordan, Andrew. Yeah, sorry, I was thinking yeah, about Jordan. Good. What a nice no, guy he is. I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. No, it probably was. I, I haven't even really thought about that. I mean, it it definitely was a therapy of some sort for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you tell someone something like that, like there's there's different levels of friends that I have that do stuff. If I was inviting someone over to do that and they weren't quite that way, I'd be like, well, why don't you call me when you get it together and uh, maybe then come over that Sunday. Totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. But it takes a lot yeah. to be like, yeah. I'm in pain and I don't know what I'm doing. And you, someone's like, well, fuck, bring that shit over. That should make a good record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, he, you know, I, I've, I've, said this to Dom and to Jordan, but I don't think that I could have done it with anyone else. You know, it, it had to be close friends. That's a fucking amazing dude. That is amazing. Then this record, like, I mean, look, I'm sorry to make you talk about all that stuff, but somebody in my audience that doesn't, maybe doesn't know you is going to right now go and mm -hmm. listen to Sundays. You know what I mean? Cause it really like mm -hmm. that, uh, there's a lot of heart in that, in those songs. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I hope, I hope that comes across. Yeah, totally. And uh, also I want to talk about the motto, but I do have to address this one thing. Like I'm a crazy, like Roxy music, like early Roxy music and like Brian Eno guy. And there's a song mm -hmm. uh, down among the dead. And there's this crazy, like Eno yeah. synth shit that's going through it that I was like, yes. Who was that? Was that you? Yeah. No, it's Dom. It's this little, um, it's like the size of your palm. I know what you're talking about. It's just the thing you can drag with your finger. Yeah, it sounds like a theremin or something. But yeah, I, I don't remember what it was called. But he just, Jordan just had it on the desk. And we're like, well, let's try that out. <laughs> well, it's cool, man. But yes, it's very, it's very much in that vein. I love that song. Uh, and it kind of comes out of nowhere at just the right time in the record, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. So what made you want to do it in mono outside of the fact that I think mono recordings sound way better coming out of a phone speaker? I do believe that very strongly. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know it until that we did this. And now I'm right there with you. Um, honestly, that was like a sort of exercise in restraint in terms of arranging um, I've always done stuff that has been, I mean, I have songs that are simpler and more stripped down, I guess, but I've always relied on panning and overdubs to like push things uh, and make a bigger picture. And this just made the songs have to be right on, you know, um, in the arrangements as well. And it just sort of played into the dry, uh, the dry effect of the, of everything, um, and the songs that I was writing. I mean, it was like they're pretty simple, um, sparse. You know, I think it, it allowed for these vocal, my vocals and lyrics to kind of stand up front even more so. Um, but that, I mean, overall, it was a lesson and just sort of an exercise in restraint. Yeah. Having parameters like that and sort of giving yourself parameters, sometimes to me, like I'm, I'm a musician as well, and I've been a recording artist for a long time. And uh, I, I, uh, I find that, that that can almost drive creativity where like I remember when I, when I started out with a four-track cassette recorder, you know, trying to do mm -hmm. these symphonic fucking things, I could really get it together a lot faster than I could once Pro Tools came out and I had endless, you know, 
endless really, yeah. of possibilities, you know? Yeah. I mean, we were still doing on everything, everything on Pro Tools, but we were just approaching it from that right. angle of, yeah. I'm noticing that there's a lot of people that are, that, that like, over the last, like, I would say, like, uh, nine, ten years, there's, like, this sort of, like, yeah, we used it, but we just did it, used it like a tape machine. We didn't take a fucking chorus yeah. and then and then like pop that in, like copy and paste the perfect chorus. You know what I mean? Like there's something about yeah. music yeah. that is alive and, and breathing and living like honky tonk women. You For know? sure. Like go listen yeah. to that fucking yeah, song. Yeah. That song ends up at a different tempo yeah. than it started at. And if it didn't, oh, totally. it, would, it would be nowhere near as cool. It probably would be very dull. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, th- those are all those are. I, I mean, in terms of art, I, I just find that that kind of stuff is so fascinating and pushes me to go in different directions at all times. Like I could sit down and write an Americana song, you know, with three chords and then a six minor, but like I just don't. <laughs> Like that doesn't interest me anymore. So I want to push, I want to try and do different things. You know, I want to get into different worlds uh, all the time. It's, it's, it's what keeps me going every day when I wake up. It's like, Oh, I get to think about something different. Yeah. I've got a songwriting session uh, later on this evening and I'm going to tell the person Mm -hmm. when I walk in, I'm not doing four chords in a minor (laughs) six, dude. I'm serious. <laughs> I mean, there's a time and a place. There's always a time. There's and a place, always a thing. like, yeah. You, Sometimes you know it just I mean. feels good, man. But I know exactly what I, I know really, exactly totally. what you mean. I, I I do this thing where I try yeah. to do things like uh, when, like if if I sit down like with an electric guitar and maybe a band, then I'm gonna do some kind of riff. And then if I if I'm sitting down mm-hmm. with my acoustic guitar by myself or with somebody, I'm gonna strum a G. And that's, you know, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? So I do shit yeah. where like, I just mm-hmm. pull out a drum machine and a bass and I try to write like that and try and get into a groove and like, yeah. you're not stuck to the chords with the bass line too. You know what I mean? You can actually change what it is. Yeah. Um, that's how the, that's how that down among the dead song came up. Oh really? With was just a drum machine, a drum machine in that little. Yeah. yeah. And then I just wrote over that. That's awesome. You know, it's yeah. funny because we all, even though we don't know we do the things, the more I talk to people doing this show, the more I talk to songwriters, the more I write with people, you realize like we all mm-hmm. do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. like, we all try yeah. to challenge yeah. ourselves and it's always kind of almost in the same way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. you're, all, you're also a visual artist. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw your work on your website. People can go to andrewcombsmusic.com and uh, check out your paintings and drawings as well. Um, have you been doing that kind of all your life as well? No, I started when my wife got pregnant with our first kid. And so I guess it's been about six years now. Um I was raised, my parents are both designers. So I was raised in a, like we, every month we would go to Fort Worth to go to the museum. I'm from Dallas. So we would go to all the museums and, you know, that was visual art was definitely a part of my upbringing, even probably more so than music. Uh, I got the music stuff. Um, My dad played piano, but more so from my cousin who was a, a live musician and toured in bands and stuff. What bands was he in? So, like bands in uh, Dallas? He lived in Austin. Um, and, uh, he played, he played, his name is Greg Combs. Uh, he doesn't play much anymore, but he played with Django Walker, Jerry Jeff's yeah, son. Yeah, I know Django. Um, yeah, and he played with, um, Dexter Freebish for a while. I know him. Um, he had, you really? Yes. Yeah. 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 I yeah, know exactly Greg's what you're talking great. about. I mean, now he, now he lives down south of town, closer to San Marcos, and has a family and, and, and is just works now. But, um, yeah, he's 
he was, he gave me my first guitar, my first recording equip, equipment, and uh, yeah, so it was all from him. The music stuff came about. Wow! But yeah, the visual visual art was always a part of my uh, childhood. Ah, Dexter Freebish. My dad's a photographer too. Oh, he is. Um, yeah, yeah. So you were you going to like the Kimball? I love that museum. Yeah, the Kimball is great. Yeah. And then just the Fort Worth Museum. And then uh, there's a modern art uh-huh. one there, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Dallas Museum is nice now, but growing up, it wasn't as good. No, I know what you mean. I, I, I play in this party band, and we played some party a few years ago in the, in the, in the Dallas Art Museum. And walked around, like, yeah. you know, in between sets or whatever. Um, so you grew up, how long did you live in Dallas? Uh, till I was 18 and then I went to, um, I got, I got accepted to go to school in New Orleans, but then Hurricane Katrina hit and I came back home uh, for a year and then I moved to Nashville. Okay. Did you go to school in Nashville? You just blew off school? Yeah. I went, I went to, I went to community college and then I went to Belmar. Oh, Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of music people that have come out of Belmont. It's, a lot of music it's an business interesting people vibe. too. It's not, yeah, it's, it's not my, it was an excuse for me to move to Nashville, I think. Yeah. In, in hindsight. Yeah. Did you, uh, once you moved to Nashville and you were going to school, you were getting on the scene. Did you, uh, like, do you have a publishing deal or anything? I did a publishing deal for six years, like heavy duty co-writing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just kind of got burnt out on it. And I worked, I was with a company called razor and tie, and then they got absorbed by Concord and the, the higher ups at Concord had me for a year. And then they were like, why are we paying this dude? (laughs) He's not, (laughs) he's not making us, he's not making us any money. So, uh, which was fine. In hindsight, I was like kind of done with it anyways. I was blowing off stuff. So, uh, I, I rarely co-write anymore. Um, I just, I, I got burned out on it. Um, did you, was there a guy named Tom DeSavia there at Concord? Yeah, I met Tom when Concord absorbed. Right. Uh, Tom's awesome. He's uh, awesome. Yeah, I, but I didn't get to, I don't know him well. I don't even know if he would remember me, but um, did, did hang out with him uh, a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've had a long history with him. Like he used to be, he was a guy like in the early 90s, like 1993 or something. He was like an assistant to a person that went out and got people signed up for ASCAP, you know? Oh, okay. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he just had all these weird jobs, and then I got signed to this subsidiary of Electra, and then one day we were meeting with the new vice president, and it was him, and it was like it's because oh, me and him were buddies when he was on <laughs> when he was working with ASCAP, and uh, and yeah. then like we've we've not uh, we've not stopped talking ever since. I talked to him. I talked to him pretty regularly. He's actually been on the show. He wrote a great book uh, with oh, John cool. Doe from X about the punk rock scene in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, he has impec- he has impeccable taste. Uh, impeccable taste, which I always admired. Yeah. 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 He really does. Like he he yeah. yeah. And he he there's no uh, in this whole industry of music. I've I've really not met somebody that high up that was as big of a fan. Like a guy that buys tickets to shows sometimes. Just to go to a show. Totally. Yeah. He's, he's a rare breed in the business side of things. Yeah. And a great drinking buddy. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so, all right. So, uh, so were you, were you signed to a label? Like I didn't look and see what all these records, like, like were you, what? Yeah. Um, my very first record was called Warrior Man. I just put out by myself. Right. Um, my second, my second record was a Thirty Tigers thing. Oh, cool! And then my third and fourth record were with New West, and then this record, I'm sort of doing it on my own. I mean, I have a digital distribution here, and then I have an overseas label. The overseas label 
is called Loose, and they've done four out of five of my records. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. And you yeah, have a I, I mean, they're great. Sorry. Go ahead. No, they're, they're great. They, they're just like a small indie uh, London label that um, has been really good to me. Uh, in terms of booking, I have a uh, um, overseas booking, but post uh, or pre COVID, my booking agent in the States left the business, and uh, which is fine. I'm. I don't know. I've I've never really taken off here so it's never been something that i've put a lot of time and effort into and the booking agents that i've had stateside I, they don't it doesn't feel like they've done a lot for me and that's not really their fault maybe it's just the stage that i was at and what they could do um i just feel like the best you know opening tours or whatever i've gotten have been just from friends you know just that's usually what it is anyway, even if you do have a book, you know. I, I mean, know. I've noticed and that, so, too, yeah. Yeah, why pay someone yeah. to do that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you what do you cool. do in the States? Like, where do you do, like, a show in Nashville? Or, what, what? like, what did you do when the record came out? Well, the record is it has not is not out yet it comes out or i mean it came out on friday so it's just like right. brand new right right um but uh i'm gonna do a show in nashville like full on with the woodwinds and everything um and then i don't have any plans uh i just kind of i don't know it's interesting the older i've gotten the less i want to really tour and want to be home with my kids yeah and, and i mean it's not I, I i understand that a lot of people feel that way but like i don't feel the calling um to be constantly on the road i i like structure in my life i like getting up in the morning with my kid getting them to school then like going to my shed and painting or writing for a few hours like knowing that i have time to be creative where the road doesn't offer that that much and it ends up, you know, being unhealthy in the long run because you just drink and hang out with friends all night long. So, <laughs> you know, it can be rather tough. Uh, Is your, yeah, I like to be home. Yeah, I, I understand that, man. I mean, I've just kind of gotten mm -hmm. to the age where I'm in a band that, you know, it's a it's like a party band, so we play private events and make money and stuff. And I do my solo thing, and I do this podcast, and I do other shit where I play on stuff. But I actually got offered a tour for the fall and uh, to go out and and be in someone's band. And I said no. It's the first time in my life I was like, nah, no. Yeah, like it's a bus, <laughs> and I was like, oh no, man, I got this dog. I know. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. It's it, weird. It's funny how that happens. And and I mean I'm I how old to are you? some degree I, you're I, a lot I, younger than me, how old are you? I, I I'm thirty five. Okay, I'm fifty three. Um, yeah, well you don't look fifty three. No, it's probably from just being on <laughs> but, the road uh, all the time. <laughs> no, you look great. I, I just I, I'm like you too. Like I like having my hands in other things too. And I, that's hard to do when you're on the road as yeah. well. Like I feel like you have to be committed to, to just shows and it's not something I want to do at this point in my life. What's funny, you know, I talked to my aunt about this the other day um, of all people, just kind of like explaining why I'm not that stoked on being on tour. And most of it is because as a singer, your whole fucking thing just becomes about that, you know, 40 minutes to hour and a half and just like making sure you can make it through that every night. You know what I mean? And I, that's what leads me to my next question to you is that your, uh, your voice is beautiful and there's, there's a delicacy to it that how do you do on the road? Like, does it hold up? Like, is it, is it, you know? Yeah, I've learned, I've learned how to take care of it. I've learned how to um, sing correctly. I mean, I've never taken 
lessons or anything, but I just have found what works for me. And strangely enough, like the softer falsetto stuff even is easier for me to do than, you know, really trying to belt it. Um, so it's more a matter of like finding musicians that can complement that and play softly right. yeah, and, and, you know, honor the song, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that's tough is like, uh, I noticed you're playing some theaters over there too. When you play a style of music that, that goes to that delicate, delicate place, it's difficult outside mm -hmm. of a theater. Like it's difficult to do that in yeah. a club or a bar or you know an arena yeah and that's i mean honestly that's part of the reason probably i mean i haven't thought about it too much but it's part of the reason why it's hard for me to 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 plan a successful tour here in the states because at my stage it requires it requires at least one out of or i mean four out of five shows to be at a bar you know and bars in the States are a lot louder than bars are overseas. Yeah. You know, they'll be quiet overseas. Right, right. Um, which is a totally a, a different subject. Um, but there, there seems to be like, uh, especially in, 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 in Europe, Europe, uh, like audiences are educated on how to go to a show like that. Yeah, it's there's a there's a, a level of respect, um, and I and I have heard from you know locals when we're over there that it's not part of that is the fact that we're from America and traveling a long way, right? Um, but also, I just feel like they appreciate culture more so than um, the average American town, like. I don't know. People go out in the States to get drunk or get laid, you know, like they'll easily spend 20 bucks to go to a show just because they get to hang out with their buddies or a girl or something, you know? So I, it just feels like it's, it's, uh, yeah, culturally, it's just, it's a different thing over there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're still going out to get drunk and get laid. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just comes across differently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so when is that show in Nashville? The show you're doing in Nashville? Uh, Octo October 2nd. Where are you going to do it? I'm doing it at the basement, the, um, the original basement. It's a smaller club, but it's my favorite club in town. And I don't know how much longer it'll be there. So I wanted to do that. Hmm. Um, do you do, do, do you have like songs in places? Like, so have you had song place, songs placed in TV <laughs> yeah, shows? And yeah, and I have. Yeah. Most of it has, uh, for, for with the exception of a couple, most of it has been songs that I've written with other people for the sole purpose of getting in sync. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, getting in TV, TV and film. Yeah. Like back in the publishing days, but, um, it's been a minute. I think I had one for my deal, man. That was the last thing. And it was like a background. I, I don't even remember the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, that's oh, I what think happens. it was Roswell. Okay, that's a that's a yeah, alien but, show. I think so. I never saw it, but um, yeah, I, I, that world is is weird to me. Just as writing songs for other people um, right. can be. I mean, all all of that stuff can be really fruitful and fun, but it can also just turn into a grind and turn into like turn into very formulaic bullshit so sure sure um they also i mean you can just give them your songs too that way because they're always yeah. looking for but some I, kind of like vibe found, or something yeah i found 
with the publishing world and why I just sort of have distanced myself from it is in Nashville, at least, I think it might be different from in LA or New York, but I uh, just found the fact that I, the songs that I wanted to write were never, according to them, pitchable. So. Fuck those guys, man. Um, and I just, yeah. <laughs> Am I just on audio now? Nope. No, they're okay, good. Nope. I don't know what happened there. Nope. I'm jealous that you're wearing um, yeah, a sweatshirt. So, I'm down here in like bazillion degrees. It is it's warm in Philly, but they have it cold in their house. Okay. <laughs> um I love Philadelphia. Do you, are you like a when you tour Man, do you do you go run around and like do you go see the Liberty Bell? I remember I had a tour manager that wanted to kill me one time. He was he was English and I made him get up at like yeah. like nine in the morning or something so we could go see the Liberty Bell before anyone yeah, else. Yeah, I've seen it before. I've seen it before. I, a bunch of my, uh, or a couple of my bandmates, Jerry still lives here and Dom, he used to live here. So it was an, it was a pretty constant commute from, for me it was like getting up here to rehearse and then starting a tour, you know, in, in New York or something like that. Yeah. I love Philadelphia. If, if I, if I had to pick one Eastern seaboard town, I would definitely be Philadelphia. That's a good one, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a like, there's a really cool music and art scene here, and it and it's like still affordable, somewhat, as opposed to New York or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Places are. How's Nashville on that level? It's insane. Becoming Austin. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That's what sucks. part of Austin do you live in? I live up uh, like uh, central, like right on the town lake, you know, on Riverside. Yeah. Right yeah, off of cool. 35. Like, I can walk downtown if I want. If I That's so awesome. desire, I could take on downtown <laughs> on foot. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess it's an interesting scene down there now, huh? It is. I mean, it's it's like anywhere, you know, after COVID, so many sort of like, so much has changed. Even like just, you know, the, the time that people play gigs, like there's no more bands that start at 12. Like, I think, really? like, like, yeah, shit, like, people just don't stay out as late. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. That's funny, huh? Yeah, it really, it's a, it's strange trying to navigate this world now, uh, post-COVID. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about, because we're, like, trying to, you know, wear a mask and stuff so we don't get sick and then have to cancel anything, but no one over there is going to be wearing a mask and... It's just like, it sucks because people can come to a show <laughs> and give you COVID and then you have to cancel your next show, Yeah, but they can still keep going to show. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it sucks from all angles to be totally fair. It's it really does. Like, it's just a pain, the, pain in the ass. Did you, did you do any live streaming during that time? During the, Yeah, I did. Yeah. And actually, yeah, that was like one of the reasons why Jordan had that, the idea for doing a totally dry mono thing was um, my live streams were in my, my old house's shed and it was just like completely bare bone, you know, just it was like where I painted. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I did a few, you know, it was very lucrative at first and it then was. of course everyone just, yeah, it was then, frighteningly it lucrative. Kinda, it was like I, the first time I played, I, I made like uh, at least three times more than I would if I went out and had had done this show. And I was like, you mean all I got to do is put on pants and fucking yeah, get one of those lights. <laughs> you don't even have to. Phone. You don't, <laughs> you even don't even have, have to put, put on, on pants. pants. <laughs> You're right. You don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, it was interesting. It was cool. Um, for a minute and yeah. then you know like, you you do miss the like interaction of course especially playing not only the audience but like playing with other musicians and that yeah that sort of thing well one thing i noticed and i don't know if you noticed but you know just from all of my years of touring and how i haven't really toured uh much in the last you know as an artist in the last 10 years 
that there was just this whole group of people that were like, holy shit, he's playing. You know what I mean? And then you kind of became yeah. part of their, like I would do like, like a weekly show for a month on and then a month off and then a month on and, uh, and do yeah. different shit. Like I've got like pianos and, and, and all kinds of shit and organs and, and, and yeah. all kinds of stupid shit. And, uh, uh-huh. You know, just try and be as like ah, yeah. <laughs> wacky as possible. <laughs> yeah. But it really did turn into people something. It was something that people were were like. I remember when I when I I'd, I'd have my first week off from the month. Like, I would immediately get all these messages that were like, "What? What happened? <laughs> you know, this was my Thursday night yeah. thing. I'd make be making dinner, have a drink, and watch you do this thing. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. I know. Uh, my pal Joe Pug really took it to the next level and like he would play music and then like he would cover a whole record one day or then one day he just did like cooking he just like made spaghetti yeah, or yeah, something yeah. you know and like <laughs> it was interesting you know and then that that sort of all evolved into like the patreon thing uh you know there's all, all these sort of little ways you can make money doing music that are interesting, but they're not quite lucrative enough to like make it a main thing. No, uh, once you get into yeah. that shit, I, I have friends that do the do the Patreon thing, and like a couple of them are like, dude, it's like making six cents an hour. Hmm. You know. Yeah, but I have a friend who pays all. I mean, they he pays his bills with it. So I, I mean, I don't know. It's hmm. it's interesting. I it like the idea of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Andrew, this has been great talking to you. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'd, I'd love to next time I'm in Austin, shake your hand. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> likewise. Maybe we could do one of these in person. I won't talk all over you the whole time. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a hindrance to me. So don't worry about that. Good. And, and thank you for making time to do this right before you're leaving. I know this is a, this is going to be a pretty intense trip and I hope you have a really good time. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let's stay in touch. Yeah, definitely. People get out there to andrewcombsmusic.com. Find out when he's, uh, if, if you're in the UK or in Europe, where people do listen to this show, mostly in Spain and France. Cool. Which are big tech, they're like big Texas people there, aren't they? Spain and France. Yeah, they have that energy. Yeah. Uh, or unfortunately, we're not going there this time. But I mean, I wish we were going back to Spain in particular. I just love touring over there and eating and drinking all their yes. delicious stuff. <laughs> yeah, enjoy all that food for me, man. I will. All right, all man. right. Take care, dude. It's great talking to you. All right, good talking to you too. See you, Andrew. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. That was Andrew Combs. Get his record Sundays available now wherever it is that you find music. That song you heard, Down Among the Dead. Love that song. Go to andrewcombsmusic.com for all of your Andrew Combs needs. And uh, if you live in Nashville, you can see him at the basement on October 2nd. Check him out and see if he's uh, still in Europe. If he's still in Europe. If he's coming to a town near you in Europe until the 17th of this month. That was weird. Sorry about that, guys. And don't forget Ham Day. Ham Day here in Austin. Health Alliance for Austin Musicians. Go to myham.org to find out more. Come on out to the thing tonight at the Mohawk Indoor Stage with Jane Leo, Anastasia Hera, and the uh, and the heroes, Kid Jones, and El Combo Oscuro. All right, gang, you can uh, subscribe, follow this podcast wherever it is that you find podcasts, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere. New shows all the time. Every Tuesday and every Friday, we're going to do it. Going to be dropping three a week in a couple weeks again. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot of interviews. Man, tons of really crazy ones, man. Crazy ones. I got the Smithereens. What? Yeah, I know. I got, uh, I got, I got Doug Clifford. Doug Cosmo Clifford from, from Credence Clearwater Revival. What? No shit. Andrew Combs, man, get out there. Check out his record Sundays. Down Among the Dead is this tune. Have a great week, whatever it is you're doing. Let's get down. Right.